Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of We're Not Home, a horror anthology uh, edited and compiled by Cam Wolf. So bear in mind, I can't be 100% uh, uh, objective about this one because I actually have a story in it called Not in Tamworth Anymore. Obviously, I didn't bother rereading my own story. I've read it like 10 times by the time it went to print. I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through, check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, pack your bags. It's going to be a long trip. Buckle yourself in for 13 chilling tales of travel and holidays gone wrong, brought to you by some of the internet's most twisted minds. Trains, planes or sandy beaches, nowhere is safe. Bad things happen when you're far from home. So this is part of a Shade of Grimm series, uh, there's an introduction by Cam Wolf where he talks about that a bit more. Um, but basically there's a plan to do like a series of these anthologies and they all raise profits for charity as well. Um, one thing, a little bit of feedback I guess I would have, we have the list of stories at the front but it doesn't have the author names. I will tell you what stories are in here though. We have In Front of Your House, Not in Tamworth Anymore, The Cabin's King, The Ghost of Walt Whitman, Old Aggie, Nine Seconds, Last in a Long Line, The Starlet Suite, Last Road Trip, 665, Karma Always Comes Back, The Lords of Dusk, and Head in the Sand. So, we're gonna start here with In Front of Your House by Kate Kavanagh. Dane reads. So this is the absolute opposite to what my experience of buying a house was. So it says, the buying process moved quickly. She put in an offer a few hours later, the bank finalized the paperwork by the following Friday, and it all coincided almost too perfectly with her glorious two weeks off work and the trip she'd already planned. Now here she was on vacation, no longer an apartment dweller, but a homeowner. And this is like inspired by the ring doorbell cams that you get, uh, and it reports some crazy stuff. I get a reference to beer pong, which we used to play at my old work and also at uni, and it says, it's time for beer pong. Only Maria set up shots instead of beer because she forgot the rest of us are over 30 and aren't built for that kind of life anymore. Yeah, 32 and a half now. So then there's Not in Tamworth anymore, which is my story. Then we move on to The Cabin's King by David DeCaro, Desero, I don't know how to say it, Desero. Um, and there's a character in this called Bones, which was interesting because I know somebody called Bones. Uh, it, they actually had Bones Fest at a pub near me recently uh, for like his birthday or something like that. So then we have The Ghost of Walt Whitman by Jeremy Fee. Um, one of my favourite stories in the collection and it was great to see uh, Jeremy in this because I, I really enjoy his YouTube channel. And in this we get reference, it's all about Walt Whitman. So we, as well as Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman, we get uh, House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielowski. Or Danielewski. And I, I didn't know that was to do with uh, House of Leaves. I just knew it's a zombie book, I think. I thought this was a very cool detail as well. It says, he looked at the digital clock in the room. His eyes saw hell displayed on it until he righted himself and realized it was 11.34 at night. And yeah, I can see that. It would look like that. Uh, we also get, for each of the authors here, we get like the author bio, photo, a little bit of info about their YouTube channel. So I wanted to read uh, Jeremy's bio here. It says, Jeremy's near-death experiences include almost drowning, ending up in the emergency room from food poisoning, and surviving a harrowing car accident. His near-life experiences include performing slam poetry at the Fort Worth Jazz Festival, visiting the ruins of the Temple of Apollo at Delphi, accidentally ordering a drug drink in Dublin, and sitting for hours in a quiet cafe in Madrid. A lifelong teacher, he has worked at multiple high schools and community colleges in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, teaching a combination of creative writing, English, and speech. His speech and mock trial students have won multiple state championships and received honours as national finalists. Many of his creative writing students are published authors. So that's very cool and as I say his story was very good as well. Um, and also it was just cool to see his face because you don't really see it on his YouTube channel. So we have Nine Seconds by Marie McWilliams, um, another great YouTuber and her story was fantastic as well. It kind of reminded me of The Langoliers by um, Stephen King. We get a reference to them, um, the pilots of this plane that sort of goes missing, uh, discussing the latest episode of Game of Thrones, which I thought was kind of funny because uh, obviously there are now no new episodes of it. Then we have uh, Regina St. Clair, R. St. Clair, The Starlet Suite. Um, this is very like Marilyn Monroe slash golden age of uh, hollywood uh, which I thought was a lot of fun. And we get a reference in this to a character being a dead ringer for Lloyd in The Shining. And this also has a reference to the, the uh, 14th floor because in some hotels they don't have a 13th floor because it's bad luck. So the 14th floor is actually the 13th floor. Uh, also this line, what were the lyrics from the Tom Waits song about motel rooms smelling like diesel? You take on the dreams of those who slept here. Love Tom Waits. I actually have one of my books, Com Coming Up to the House, is named after a Tom Waits song. Then we have Last Road Trip by Slady Volheim, um, which is a great name, by the way. 
And this references the uh, Area 51 attempt to storm it, you know? And Karma always comes back by Cachet Warren. In that we get a reference, uh, she broke the number one rule of visiting someone's house, don't show up unannounced. And I hate it when people do that. Uh, that was quite a creepy story as well. Um, like death and dismemberment and stuff. I mean, it's horror, isn't it? So, you know. And we have The Lords of Dusk by the one and only Jason White. I actually helped Jason uh, editing his novel. And then finally at the end we have Head in the Sand by Cam Wolf. And uh, we have one of the characters here. Marnie didn't like the ocean, not enough to step more than three feet deep into it. Todd knew this, but he had found himself caring less and less over the past year or two. Uh, I was used to be the same, at least with the ocean. Um, I went on holiday to Spain about two, three years ago and forced myself to go out swimming in the sea just because it's one of the things that I genu generally wouldn't do. And it's always nice to confront your fears, you know? So yeah, We're Not Home, a horror anthology. Mostly pretty good. Um, there were a couple of writers in this, I'm not going to name names, but there were a couple where their usage of um, um, apostrophes was questionable. Um, one or two minor like layout and formatting errors and stuff, but again, it is an indie book. All the proceeds go to charity. Still pretty solid collection. I gave it like a pretty strong 3.5 out of 5. Obviously some stories are better than others. Um, the Starlet Suite was great. Uh, Jeremy's story, um, what was it? The Ghost of Walt Whitman, that was cracking. Cam's one was pretty good. Um, Karma always comes back as well, that one was great. Um, they were Actually, they were all pretty good. It's just, uh, as I say, some of them could maybe have benefited from a little bit more editing. But yeah, that's what I made of We're Not Home, a horror anthology. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.